Hi, today we'll be talking about Raspberry Pi. This is not the first video on this channel about Raspberry Pi, however, it is the first about the Raspberry Pi Pico development board with the microcontroller RP2040 and today we'll learn how to get started with it using MicroPython. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. PCBWay is a company specialized in high quality prototyping services. They are capable of manufacturing printed circuit boards on multiple layers with different colors of the silk screen and the solder mask. It is possible to make printed circuit boards with green color just like Raspberry Pi. And here are some prototypes that I've received from PCBWay which I'll be using in my next videos. PCBWay also offers 3D printing and CNC services. Visit PCBWay.com to learn more. Raspberry Pi is a super popular brand for single board computers which have been dominating the market for nearly a decade. In 2021, the Raspberry Pi Foundation decided to make a groundbreaking move by announcing Raspberry Pi Pico development board with RP2040 microcontroller. Basically, the Raspberry Pi Foundation is now entering the educational and makers market dominated until now by microcontrollers such as Arduino and uh, microcontrollers with Wi-Fi capabilities by Espressive such as ESP32 and ESP8266. Let's do a quick unboxing of Raspberry Pi Pico. I've obtained this from an official reseller of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Raspberry Pi Pico comes with RP2040 microcontroller chip designed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation in the United Kingdom. It is a dual-core ARM Cortex-M0 Plus processor with flexible clock running with up to 133 MHz. It has um, 264 uh, KB of SRAM and 2 MB of onboard flash memory. It is a USB 1.1 device with host support. There are 26 multifunctional GPIO pins including two SPI buses, two I2C buses, uh, two UARTs, three 12-bit analog to digital converters and 16 controllable push with modulation channels. Furthermore, Raspberry Pi Pico has a built-in temperature sensor. As you can see, the dimensions are 5 by 2 centimeters. There are several different ways how to program Raspberry Pi Pico. The Raspberry Pi Foundation is providing C and C++ SDK. Furthermore, there are instructions how to use MicroPython on it, which we'll be covering in this video. Also, there are community efforts to port other programming languages and frameworks to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Most notably, you can run Arduino sketches on Raspberry Pi Pico and you can upload them through Arduino IDE. MicroPython is a lean and efficient implementation of the popular Python 3 programming language. It includes a very small subset of the Python standard library because it is optimized to run on constrained microcontrollers uh, such as the Raspberry Pi Pico. MicroPython is an open source project and the minimal system requirements are just 256k of code space and 16k of RAM, which means that MicroPython runs on a lot of microcontrollers which are significantly more constrained compared to Raspberry Pi Pico. Step number one is to download and install MicroPython on your Raspberry Pi Pico. This is a very simple procedure that you can do with drag and drop. Visit raspberrypi.org to obtain MicroPython for Raspberry Pi Pico, a link is available in the description of the video. Push and hold the boot cell button and plug your Raspberry Pi into the USB port of your computer. Release the boot cell button after your Raspberry Pi Pico is connected to the computer. It will mount as a mass storage device with the name rpi-rp2. With drag and drop, copy the MicroPython file that we've downloaded to the mass storage device. Your Pico will automatically reboot and now you're running MicroPython on it. The recommended way to program MicroPython applications on the Raspberry Pi Pico is using the open source Python IDE for beginners called Thony. It is available for Windows, Mac and Linux. I'm personally using it on Ubuntu. By the way, the source code of Thony is available in GitHub, so please consider giving it a star, because it is a great open source project. 
After installing Thony, go to Tools, Options and select an interpreter of MicroPython for Raspberry Pi Pico. If you have trouble selecting it and if it's missing from the menu, please make sure that you are running the latest Thony version. Older Thony versions do not have support for Raspberry Pi Pico. Step number 3. Let's do some programming with MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So far we have installed MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico, we've installed Thony Editor on the computer and we have connected the Raspberry Pi Pico to the computer. The Raspberry Pi Pico has a built-in LED connected to GPIO 25. Now I'm going to write a very simple application that will make this LED blink on every second. I'm going to save this source code as main.py directly on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Immediately after uploading it, I'm pressing the run button in Thony IDE so that the application will start running. I saved it as main.py and the file name is very important because the MicroPython framework looks for exactly this file name and automatically starts it the next time you turn the Raspberry Pi Pico even if it's not connected to a computer. One more thing, you can access the REPL via USB serial. As you can see, if your Raspberry Pi Pico is connected to the personal computer, it is even possible to use it directly from Phony. REPL stands for Real Evaluate Print Loop. It is an interactive MicroPython prompt. So far so good. We have MicroPython successfully running on the Raspberry Pi Pico and it's time for conclusions. In this video, you've learned the exact steps how to get started with MicroPython on Raspberry Pi Pico. Raspberry Pi Pico is an affordable development board which has some great advantages. Obviously, the price is fantastic, just four US dollars for such a capable and fast development board. However, there are also some disadvantages. For example, there is no built-in Wi-Fi. Of course, there are other boards on the market with Wi-Fi capabilities and the same microcontroller RP2040, but they come at significantly higher price. Another disadvantage, in my opinion, is the lack of USB-C. Uh, Raspberry Pi Pico is coming with micro USB connector, which is quite convenient, but obviously the world is moving on to USB-C. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please hit the like button if you find it useful. And subscribe to my YouTube channel because there will be more videos about Raspberry Pi Pico and of course the Raspberry Pi single board computers. And most importantly, stay tuned for new videos.